Welcome back, it's me Lou. For today's video, we're gonna jump into the time machine and travel way, way back to the 1990s. So these action figures we're looking at right now, these were produced by Toy Biz. Um, some of them are from their X-Men line, some are from their X-Force line, and some are from their Marvel Superheroes line. Um, I bought these figures recently at my favorite collectible toy store, and that is Wax Packs Records and Toys, located in wonderful Roselle, Illinois. If you happen to be in the Chicagoland area or in the Roselle area, I highly suggest you check that place out. It's awesome. So let's get let's get started. Um, so right now, um, I'm to be honest, I'm kind of burned out on a lot of the modern action figure. Um, lines um you know for marvel legends <laughs> i've been burned i've been burnt been burned out on that toy line for like maybe the last two years um not that the figures are bad you know they're phenomenal you know they look very realistic especially the movie based characters um, the, the articulation's awesome lots of accessories but like with the recent increase in the prices and the availability of some of these figures um you know it's, it's been kind of a turn off and I don't know, I've been kind of feeling burnt out on it. Um, but there's something about the older toys like these, even though they're not um, are as, arti as articulated as the newer figures. And they're, these figures are very primitive in their design and engineering. But anytime I can run into like an old action figure for dirt cheap prices, and if they're still in great shape, for me, it's kind of like a, I don't know, I kind of dig that a lot. You know, there's, it's, there's something fun in that. And uh, these figures just really take me back. And the way I kind of view these older Toy Biz figures is much as it's kind of like how I kind of view the older Kenner Star Wars figures from the 70s and 80s. Um, you know, even though they're a lot more basic, a lot more simple in design, you know, that they're really, really wonderful because they embody that time period. Um, you know, they're, they're a great reflection of like you know, especially in this case, what the X-Men comic books were like during this, you know, during the 90s and late 80s. And these toys are just that. They're fun toys. You know, they're not premium collectibles by any means. A lot of the times these toys will have fun play features and they're just fun. They're all unique and they're cool to look at. So let's get started. Um, on our left, we have Cable. Um, I believe this is based off one of the, des the designs by artist um, Greg Capullo when he was working on the X-Force comic book. Um, I don't think this is the gun he, this toy specifically came with. Uh, but when I bought this figure loose, this was the gun that was equipped on his hand. So I'm assuming the previous owner probably lost accessory or just swapped it out. Um, it's a nice rendition of Cable, much like other versions of Cable. He has the giant shoulder pads, the cybernetic arm, um... A lot of pouches and harnesses and bullets all over them. It's a great figure. Um, up next, we have Apocalypse. Now, this is one of the later versions of Apocalypse. The first version of Apocalypse, he was kind of a lot more skinnier and lankier. Uh, this one, it really does a better job of capturing his size and bulk. Um... Unfortunately, I don't have his normal looking arms. These are the swappable accessories. So I kind of do wish I had the normal arms, but unfortunately I don't. So if, you know, if he had this figure new, he'd come with like normal looking arms and then you could just swap these arms on. And then he's also missing, um, he had these tubes that, which would connect to his back and then they'd plug into the elbows. But again, missing those accessories. But the figure is still in pretty decent shape. It's not scuffed up or scarred all that bad. It's still very presentable. Um, Apocalypse is one of my favorite X-Men characters. Uh, especially over the last, I don't know, like two or three years. Uh, with the recent um, House of X, Powers of Ten storyline that they've been doing in the Marvel comic books. You know, big fan of Apocalypse. Especially when he was a member on the Quiet Council. Um, next, we have Fritz Roy. So I believe there's actually two versions of this figure. Um, this one has the gold paint running down his torso, whereas there's a variant, and instead of using gold paint, it's this yellow paint. 
Um, he's missing he's missing his accessories as well. Um, the original figure had like I believe some sort of chest armor, and his like crystalline helmet kind of deal. Um, I like the sculpting on this figure a lot. I think the musculature is really well done. I like the proportions. I like how he has these giant bulkier calves or calf muscles. You know, it makes him look a little bit more squat, but it it just looks kind of neat. And then lastly, we have the Silver Surfer. I can't remember if this was the first release of the toy. For some odd reason, I want to say there might have been two versions of this. Um, there's a part of me that thinks there might have been just a plain, like, gray-colored Silver Surfer versus this one, which is, um, you know, chrome-plated. I like the chrome plating a lot on this. Um, I'm very fortunate that even though this has some, like, uh, scratches and scuffs, it's not necessarily flaking off. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Unfortunately, his uh, surfboard is a completely different story. It's beat to hell. It's missing the wheels underneath. And much like the older, like, uh, Kenner C-3PO action figures from, like, the 70s and 80s, his joints are just completely, like, this wobbly and loose. But it's awesome I, I just love looking at it it just looks so cool he has a very long face as you can see his eyes are very high up on his head and he has a long nose looks kind of strange but yeah wonderful assortment of figures um very 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 stoked to find these you know it would have been nice to find these like you know with all their accessories or even mint on card but for me, you know, there's a fun challenge in finding nice figures, like in a stick up, <laughs> in a bin of like this broken toys, and you know, for me, these were kind of like the gems that were kind of standing out. You know, they weren't too beat up, they weren't very scuffed up, um, and I bought these for dirt cheap prices. And like I said in previous videos, not that I'm looking to start a toy biz collection, but you know, if I could come across any of these uh, older X Men or Marvel. Uh, action figures loose and if the prices are reasonable you know I don't mind jumping on board all right so let's wrap this video up once again my name is Lou if you're new to my channel welcome if you're a returning subscriber viewer thank you so much for your support so until the next video be safe take care of yourself by lots of toys and most importantly be happy and I'll see you at the next one all right later